The United Nations Climate Summit COP28 has just concluded. Let's understand why COP28 matters and what were the outcomes of the summit. But first, a bit more context on what this event is about. COP refers to the conference of parties. Here parties are the 192 member countries that signed the UN Climate Agreement in 1992 and pledged to cut down their greenhouse gas emissions. Every year, representatives from these countries come together to discuss the progress of this goal. They also decide on collective actions required to address the issue of climate change. The summit is attended by world leaders, government officials, environmentalists, think tanks, charities and the businesses. The 20th edition of this meeting was held this year in Dubai from 30th November to 12th December. The location of the summit was seen as a controversial as Dubai is one of the biggest oil producing nations in the world. And oil being a fossil fuel is one of the leading causes of greenhouse gas emissions. In fact, the president of the COP28 talks was Sultan Al Jabbar, the head of the Abu Dhabi National Oil Company. But regardless of these issues, COP28 was quite eventful. Several declarations were made on renewable energy and efficiency, food system transformation and health as well as initiatives to decarbonize AV emitting industry. Let's discuss the notable outcomes from the summit. Number 1, in a historic move, nearly 200 countries agreed to transition away from fossil fuels in energy system. At the end of COP28, a global stock take, which is a central report of the summit, was released. At the start of the talks, multiple countries had called out of a complete phase out of fossil fuels, but a consensus couldn't be reached. But after days of debate and negotiations, all countries finally agreed to transition away from fossil fuels, phase down the use of unabated coal power, and move towards renewable energy. All these points were included in the final document. Number two. The Loss and Damage Fund was established. The idea of a Loss and Damage Fund was first approved last year in COP27. Under this initiative, rich developed countries agreed to pay compensation to the poorer nations for the extreme climate events they faced. But the details were not finalized. The Loss and Damage Fund became operational during COP28. A sum of $792 million has been pledged towards the fund so far, with UAE and Germany committing $100 million each. Moreover, a top executive of the World Bank has said that the fund can start running in the next three months. Number 3. 118 countries signed a pledge to triple renewable energy capacity by 2030. The major countries that have made this commitment include Japan, Australia, Canada, Chile, Brazil, Nigeria, and Barbados. Although India and China express support for the cause, both countries refrain from signing the pledge. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi also promised to bring emission intensity down by 45% by 2030 and increase the share of non-fossil fuels to 50%. Number 4. UAE announces a $30 billion fund for developing countries. The private investment fund called Altera will fund climate projects in developing countries. The country has also set aside funds for developing solar and wind energy projects of 6 gigawatt capacity in India. Number 5. India plans to roll out 50,000 electric buses for public transport by 2027. On the sidelines of COP28 talks, Indian representatives announced big plans to reduce emissions by introducing more electric buses. The initiative would require an investment of $390 million, out of which $150 million is being contributed by the US government and philanthropic organization, and $240 million by the Indian government. Apart from this, the PM Narendra Modi also offered to host the COP summit in India in 2028. Thanks for watching. Do not forget to like, comment and subscribe for more such videos.